Hey guys, welcome. It is a pleasure to have you in the studio with me today. I am really excited because for a long time, I have looked at certain artists that I very much admire, and I see how they're able to capture the realistic quality of lighting. A lot of times they're not even putting that much detail into it, but they're getting the values right. And for me, I feel like that has been a struggle previously in my art. I really wanna get better at that. So why am I excited? I'm excited because I stumbled across an artist who I very much admire and who I believe captures the lighting and the mood of painting very well. And I thought I can learn a lot from this person. And I saw this person doing something that I guess I hadn't really considered before, and it was painting these mini paintings that are probably about, you know, that size. And it seemed like this person painted it in one sitting in one day. And it was very simple, but it really captured the values very, very well. And I wanted to try it so that I could practice and get better at it. So that's what I did in this video, and I'm very pleased with the outcome. And I'll have to say, it really wasn't that complicated. And it was a great learning experience, so much so that I would recommend it to any artists watching who want to improve getting their values and colors down in such a way where you're able to depict that convincing sense of light. So, let's jump into it. Okay everybody, the size of the panel that we're gonna be painting on today is roughly six and a half by seven inches. It's basically square or pretty close to it, but I think it's gonna work well for what we're gonna be painting. Now, when I'm trying to figure out what to paint and I'm working on the composition, I will usually have a vague idea in my head of what I want to paint, for instance, a mountain sunset, and I will take my ideas and sketch them out in thumbnail form on a piece of paper. I will start small until I kind of have an idea of what I like and what I don't like, and then I'll do some larger sketches, and that way, I can make sure that all of the elements of my composition, the mountains, uh, the clouds, the foreground, are arranged in the correct places. And then, when I get it the way I want it, I will take that composition and sketch it out on the panel, and that is what we're going to do now. This is the composition which I have sketched onto the panel freehand while simply looking at the thumbnail sketch that I did on the paper. Now I do want to mention really quick that I did have this panel toned with a warm gray color, pretty dark. That is for the purpose of keeping this painting's lighting or values a little bit lower because it's going to be a evening picture it's gonna have low lighting. So toning the canvas a little bit darker helps me keep it overall a little bit darker because I'm gonna be judging all of my values based on this darker toning that I put on. So colors that would normally look a little bit darker if this was white are going to look very bright against this dark tone that I have put on. So that's the purpose of toning the canvas. I'm ready to start painting. I did actually smudge out this tree that I had right here just because it was throwing me off. I didn't really like it uh, anymore. So I've decided I need to either omit it entirely or make it a whole lot smaller. We'll see as we get painting, but what I'm gonna do is put my first layer of paint over everything, and that's gonna be the block in. And I'm gonna start with what is furthest away and work my way forward. So we're gonna start with this background sky. 
and I'm gonna mix a color for that now. All right, I've mixed a blue color that I'm gonna put right up here. So I've got that blue in there. As the sky begins to come down towards the horizon where the sun is setting, I wanna lighten the sky a little bit and make it a little bit warmer. So I've mixed a yellowish orange kind of color and I'm just gonna to start to put that in. Very simply, right across the middle point here and blend it upwards. I think you'll find that oil paint is very easy to blend compared to acrylic. That's one of the reasons why I like it so much. And now I'm taking a color that is basically the same as what we've been using only I have added titanium white and yellow ochre into it so it uh, raises the value but also makes it a little bit more on the yellow side okay I think that's pretty good now I'm gonna go ahead and put these clouds in and you can see that I did overlap a lot of the cloud shapes um, that's okay I'll re-establish them with uh, the cloud color here and for the clouds, I'm going to try this lavender color here. And I want it to be, well, it's, it's looking to be very similar to the sky. I want it to be just a little bit darker. So I'm going to darken it up a little bit. Just a little bit darker. That's pretty good. It's looking a little bit too blue, though. So I'm going to add a little bit of that brilliant red into it. Just a touch, because brilliant red, I found, is pretty overpowering. This might be a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna lighten it a little bit. Uh, these clouds are a little bit tricky. That's looking too purple. I'm gonna to have to mess around with the colors until I get exactly what I want. Just gonna wipe this back. I want something that is just barely distinguishable from the sky up here but as it comes down you'll really be able to tell where it is based on the lighter sky further down towards the horizon that's looking too ah, it's looking too purple this is tricky I'm gonna add a little bit more blue into it a little bit more of that sky blue we'll just see what we get here it's a little bit better, I think. Yeah, I like that better. I like that a lot better. And now I'm just gonna start to put those cloud shapes back in. that I think uh, it's time to move on to the mountains now next up we're gonna put the mountains in and I'm gonna start with the furthest away mountains I'm gonna put those in a little bit lighter and then as I come forward with the mountains until I end up with this one which is the closest mountain I'm gonna be getting just slightly darker with the color that I apply that's a little bit too dark perhaps uh, I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit I think that's a little bit better. The 
idea is to have the mountains just a little bit darker than everything else we've put on so far. And you notice I switched brushes as well. I wanted something just a little bit smaller and a little bit more detail oriented to put these mountains on. So I grabbed my, I think this is a number two synthetic round. All right, let's move on to this mountain, which is gonna be darker than all the rest. Just a little bit darker. I don't want it to be overpoweringly dark. I think that's good for down here. As I move up in the mountains towards the peaks, I think I'm going to raise the value slightly just to make them a little bit lighter because I'm guessing that those peaks are going to be a little bit further away than the foothills down below. So we're going to keep the foothills dark. Same thing with this mountain over here. Okay, I like that. Now I'm going to put in some even closer foothills at the base of the mountains, which are going to be even darker and probably a little bit more green. So I think what I'm going to do is use some phthalo blue, mix it into our mountain color here that we've been using already. And I'm going to mix in a little bit of phthalo blue, like I said, but also a little bit of burnt umber and just a little bit of yellow ochre. And I think that'll form a nice dark color. Let's try it out. That's pretty good. I think I'm going to add a little bit more yellow ochre into it to green it up just a touch. We'll try this. Okay, I like that. That's probably pretty good. Now, as I move forward and put the foreground on, I'm going to keep it really simple because I've designed the painting to have a simple foreground so that it will not distract from these mountains. And I'm gonna mix a color that is gonna be probably a brown, a very dark, warm brown. So we'll put this in. I'm gonna add some interest into it by changing the values and colors in certain areas. Add some texture, make it darker towards the edges. I'm gonna darken up the area right up in here, just so that it looks like there's a closer forest popping up right there. Then I'm going to lighten this area up just a little bit. Just a little bit. So that it looks like it's fading back into the distance. And I think I am going to put a tree right over here. All right. Now that I got the image blocked in, I'm ready to start modeling, which means I'm going to start refining it a little bit more and getting in here and adding a little bit more detail and building up the image for those final details at the end. I'm going to take a lighter blue that is just slightly lighter than these peaks and I'm going to add in a little bit of snow. Very 
very simple stuff. Now I want to take my time putting in the snow and I really want to think about it because the snow is going to define the shape of the peaks so uh, it is very pivotal. Now I know you'd think snow is white so therefore use titanium white for the snow but if I put that on uh, it would not fit the lighting of this painting because it's so bright so I have to think about it in relation to what I already have on here. So the snow is actually a light blue. And I'm just gonna show you on the palette what it looks like. Okay, here's my really messy palette. I apologize for that. But this right here is the color that I'm using for that snow. If you see it next to some titanium white here, you can see it's quite a bit darker. Now, I just wanted to point this out because you want to be mixing colors for things in your painting based on your painting, not based on the way you think about them in general uh, in life. Um, and I'll just show you maybe really quick here. I'll take some titanium white. And it's not even going to be pure titanium white, but I'm going to put some on here really quick. You can tell right away uh, just from one little blob here that it is just too white. It's too... Um, high in value to fit in the scene. And that's because the scene is low lighting. Okay, let's continue to put that snow on. Now because these mountains way back here are further away, uh, they're already a lighter value. So I'm gonna have to make the snow highlights for back there just a little bit lighter to match the way they already are which is a lighter value because, again, they're further away. thing I also want to be thinking about in adding this snow is uh, directions because like I said earlier putting down the snow is going to add definition to the shape of the mountain and right away I'm already noticing that there is a similarity here with the shape of this part of the mountain and the direction of this part of the mountain they're both see that they're both kind of the same you got this and then you got that uh, I want to avoid instances like that so I'm gonna try to find a way to change this because I kind of like the way this looks but it is worth taking your time to think it out I'm going to attempt to raise this up a little bit. I kind of like the look of the shape of that a little bit better. Alright, this is the modeling stage complete. As you can see, I have added a lot more detail. I put the snow in, uh, I worked with the clouds a little bit more, and also on this cloud that comes up like this, right up at the top here, I just darkened it a little bit. And uh, yeah, that's basically all there was to the modeling stage. Now I'm ready for those final details, and then we're gonna finish this up. Lightening up the value right there with just a few brush strokes already adds the effect of mist, 
which I really like. Well, that is going to sum it up for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate your thumbs up and your comments. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, God bless you all. We'll see you later.